Welcome to track number two of My First Love. We shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, caught up in His holiness, caught up in His glory. Shall not be the same. We shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last
Hallelujah. Amen. Father, thank you for the help given to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sit down. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 12. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Amen. Amen. But now I know in part, then I will know fully, just as I also have been fully known. Amen. Amen. But now, faith, hope, and love abide. And these three. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. Amen. So we talk about faith, about hope. And now we are talking about faith. Now faith is, uh, hope is great, but like many of the critics of hope say, hope doesn't make you create anything per se. It brings energy and hopefulness, if you like. Do you understand? Now, hope has to do with the future. What you can do with the future. What's going to happen. And so when you are in a church with a lot of hope, you have a large church of hopeful people. Do you get it? Now, there is something similar to hope, but a little different. And that is faith. Now, faith makes you do something because faith has to do with now. Whereas hope has to do with the future. Alright? So Christ is in you as the hope of beauty, of glory. One day, our hope of being with the Lord, do you understand, is there. But, we move over and then you come to another world of faith. Now, faith has to do with something that is current. It's true, we, we believe. One day. One day, one day. But faith has to do with now. That's why the first word in the book on faith is now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. You get it? So if you turn with me to that chapter... You see the very first word there is now. Faith is the substance or the assurance of something you are hoping for. So as you can see, it's different from faith. Hope is different from faith. You need hope before you can have faith. You have hope. I'm going to, I hope that it's going to happen. One day, God will do it. God is going to help us. It will work. I know it. Now, faith makes it substantial. Okay? The substance. The substance of something you are hoping that will be with you in your life. So, if you just have hope, you will not have anything today. You have energy to keep you alive for tomorrow. But we are not sure whether you will have anything tomorrow. But you will have energy 
to stay around until tomorrow. So to the next year, whenever it is in the future, whenever it comes up. Are you there? So faith is the thing that makes substance come to your hopes. Okay? And that is something that is a very important ingredient for your life as a minister. Now I'm talking to you about the ministry. Don't don't have any delusions about what I'm talking about. I am talking about the ministry. And I'm assuming that all of you are going to be ministers. And that all of you are going to obey the call of God. Because many are called. Not few are called. Many are called. So I pray and hope that you will fulfill your calling. And not live a life of uselessness. As far as God is concerned. Okay. Now. We hope. That God will use us. But you need to convert your hope to faith. If you are going to please God, you have to do something now. And you have to do something substantial. And substantial things are done today. Okay? Are you there? So, a good leader has hope in his pocket then also has faith and also have love in the end. But a good leader, after giving the people hope, must rise up and add substance to the things that he hopes for. That is what shows that you have faith. It's when you are making things substantial. It's what shows that you have faith. Okay? So if you hope to serve God, you hope to be a servant of the Lord. You hope that God will use you one day. Now, a time will come and, then, and now is the time. You need to make or add substance to all the future aspirations that you have in your heart. Are you listening to me? Amen. Wow. So, a good politician after giving us hope when he has won the election will come up and add substance to the things that he hopes for and the things that he has told us that he hopes for. Are you there? Now, President Obama is trying to exercise faith now and practically give substance to the things that he preached. Hope. And so he's trying to do things now that make it real. Okay? Um, it is when you are moving in faith that you see somebody's actions. You see moves. Real moves. That's the person's faith. When you have hope, I just see brightness and light in you. But you may just be motionless. Very excited. Waiting for the coming of this great blessing to your life. Do you understand? So your hope is what brings the energy. Now your faith is what converts imagination into real things. 
So when I had the hope, okay, you get it, of serving the Lord, when I finished school, I had to convert it into something real. And that showed whether I had any faith at all. As for hope, they knew I had hope, but after school it will show whether I had also faith. Uh, everybody can see that I have, I have hope. But after school, you see whether I also had faith. Uh-huh. Or oh, there was any substance. That's why they say that the preachers of hope are not substantial. Because hope doesn't have substance. It just has encouraging imaginations of the future. That's why they say preachers of hope are not substantial. And that, that was what Sarah Palin and the other man, you know, what is the guy who was fighting against Obama? Uh, McCain. He was saying, because he, his arm was bent like this. He said, look, I have gone to war for my country. All my life I have fought for my country substantially. This man who is charming you is just talking about dreams and imagination. He has never fought for, for the country before like I have fought with my life. All my life I have fought for this country. He's not a man of substance. It's just talk. Uh-huh. Are you listening to me? Yes, we can. Change what? We believe. <laughs> but you now have to show faith. You get it? By bringing up some actions that today bring about your dreams. Okay? Now, I have hope that one day Lighthouse Chapel will have 10,000 churches. Now, that is my hope. Yes, we can. Change we believe. Yes, we can. But now, if I also have faith, so I have hope, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy. So, I think with homecoming last year, I was giving hope that it's possible. Yes, we can. Now, if I have faith that we can, then I will have a camp like I'm having. And encourage you to become pastors of the churches. You understand? So, I have moved. I have moved from just bringing the dream to doing things that make my dream real and substance coming into the hopefulness that I'm just speaking out. Or you can accuse me. Say 10,000 churches from where? How? You are just talking. You are just, no, you are not substantial. But then, if you give me a bit of time, I'll do some practical things. And after a while, you'll realize that I'm also having faith. Now, preachers of faith and people of faith are commonly people of substance. Hmm? Substance. People of faith. People of hope have nothing except their good speeches and their good messages and the hopefulness that they bring. But men of faith, eh? now, I'm not saying that hope is not good, though. I told you why it is good. Mm, I'm just shifting to another. Everything is so good that. When you are talking about one thing, it looks like everything else is not important. By the time we get to love, you will see, God love says that without love, <laughs> you can have faith, you can do this, you can do this. They say that it's like love is the main thing. So everything, when we talk about it, it's like it's the main thing. And everything else is useless. Okay, so faith 
If how many of you have faith here? See, there abided these three. You need faith, you need hope, and you need love. And the greatest, surprisingly, is the weakest looking one. Mm -hmm. It is the love part that will bump you off after you follow your hopes and take practical steps in faith. It is love that will finish you off and reduce us from a large army to the reality of few are chosen. Yeah. Do you understand? Because I have not come to change what is in existence. The Bible says one generation comes and another generation goes and the earth remaineth the same. Yeah. In the end, you will only see few. Yeah. The first few, a lot of people will be there when it's at the time of hope. Even more than all of you. In fact, like all of you here. Hope. You are the hopeful ones. When you finish school, then those who have faith will appear. Then they will take steps. Practical, substantial steps. And they will enter into something. Then after some time, those without the love, which is patient. <laughs> which is which is fine. Which is not easily provoked. Which does not take into account a wrong suffered. Which endures all things. Which believes all things. It covers a multitude of sins. Which does not rejoice in unrighteousness. That thing. It's what will reduce our number even further. Till you see that the Bible is true. That few are chosen. Yeah. Have you understood what I'm preaching about? You get it? Mm. That's, that's what keeps breaking us down. So we can't feel why, feel why, feel why, feel why, feel why, feel why. Mm. Like marriage. Everybody comes into this world, you know, with dreams of who you are going to marry. Even the children, they play games about marriage. <laughs> It's a dream of a child. They have they have skipping games. When when you, when you stop, they, they ask you, how many kisses will you have at your wedding? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, twenty. You have twenty kisses. Will you have your wedding? Kitchen, kitchen, toilet, bathroom, chair. 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 Hey! You are having your wedding in the toilet. How many what? 
How many children will you have? One, two, three, four, five, twenty. And what again? What car will you drive? Toyota. Toyota what? A bungalow lorry. Toyota Benz. A bungalow lorry. Toyota Benz. A bungalow lorry. Toyota Benz. A bungalow lorry. Toyota. A bungalow lorry. A bungalow lorry. So, we come into the world with hope of living a happily ever after. From childhood, it is built into you. Then, you have to practically do it. Whether you even have your marriage in the church. Or in the toilet. Or in the bathroom. Or in the kitchen. And then, after that, you are going along in this marriage, love, do you see, will start to bump you off. Whether you are patient, whether you are kind, or you are ill-natured. That does not take into account a wrong suffered. Even some of you, from the way you, you behave, do you get it? From the way you behave, you can see the kind of person that you are. It's true. One day, a certain sister, she was working in the church office. And uh, by the grace of God, they were going away on a mission. Now, the manager of that office I think even gave the person uh, some help. and said, oh, I want to bless you also with this as you go. As this person was going, the, the last thing that she said was that, I did not enjoy working with you because of this, 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 and that. And this have experienced in this place. Goodbye. I, I wanted to just point it out to you. But, but you see, it's no wonder that as that person went out, the same spirit that cannot forget about a wrong suffered, or that takes into account everything and that cannot release, hasn't got a sweet Spirit to just flow ends up in confusion. Yes. But you can see from a person behavior in school, that, that's why if person behavior in school, attitude, work, everything you see and it goes on. Yeah. That's why you should never marry somebody you don't know. Oh yeah. No defect. Any beautiful, listen. Any beautiful, uh, listen. Otherwise, knowledge will not be passed on to you. Yeah. Never marry a beautiful person just because she's beautiful. Macbeth was trying to say something from the Bible when he said, There is no art. There is no art to find the mind's construction in the face. There is no art. You can never sometimes correlate this picture with what is real. So, are you there? 
What are we talking about? Love. Sit down. Faith is important because faith is what will make a few of your dreams happen. A few of your dreams. Yeah. A few of your dreams. Many years ago when I was in a relationship on campus here, or just about entering or in a relationship, or just about entering, or just about to enter, I don't remember which one. I told my beloved that I had a dream. And not a dream that I, when I woke up, like I had a dream tonight. But like a dream that I woke up and I said, well, I dreamt. No. Just a visual imagination, if you like, of what I want to be. And I said that I imagine that I'll be on a mountain, on a hill, and a lot of people will come around and I will teach them. You see, right now I'm on a hill. Come on, one time. a hill. I'm preaching on a hill. Do you see? But it takes certain practical steps of substance to make dreams happen. Amen. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Practical. What's happening to my mic? I feel that my volume drops. Oh, is it everything okay? Okay. It takes practical steps. Amen. Amen. To make dreams happen. Amen. Amen. For example, many of the things that we see today, right, have happened before. A good example is uh, in 1933, around that time, the world economy experienced something similar to what is happening now. But then it was even worse. In Germany, for instance, which really helped Hitler to come to power, five of the top banks collapsed. They just wake up one day and say, we have no money. There is nothing. If you come to the bank, whatever you have there is not there anymore. We are sorry. That's that. We are sorry. Yeah. That is how come all the banks in the world. That's why the most important subject in the world is actually history. It's the most important subject. Those of you who did history, try to. I don't know whether you can apply because you need a little bit of intelligence to apply what you've learned in school. Because Africa is ruled by people who went to school in Cambridge, Oxford and have learned all those things. But to apply it practically, there's a small gap there. Are you there? Now listen, what was I telling you? Same thing happened. Now there was a man who nobody thought would ever be president. His name was Franklin Roosevelt. You must have heard of him. Yeah. He preached hope, just like Obama. He was, a, I think, a Democrat. And he came with the message of hope. There was no money in America. That's when Kenneth Hagin and all those people started their ministry. Very, 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 very poor. And he came with a wild message of hope. And to their surprise, he actually won the election. And they even commented that something like this can happen. A change of power in the democracy. It was that wild. Now when he came, you see, with his dreams, he made it practical. And he said that in one day he's going to create about four million jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Practical. You see, you have said that the people have followed you. Now you have to make jobs. The substance. So do you know what he did? Do you know what he did? He created 30,000 projects in the country. 30,000 different projects that the country has never done before. Dams, 
wrote this that everybody <laughs> yeah every 30,000 different projects yeah and they showed you see dams things that they built in those days yeah even the, the pentagon you see the pentagon it was built during the second world war that's when they built that building yeah the last I mean projects Everywhere was somebody was building something and repair. You see, so that is exactly what Obama is doing right now. He's creating a lot of jobs to do. Build this, build this, build that. Everything history. He's just trying to follow the same thing that the guy did. Yeah. Yeah. You see, if you are clever, you always add on the information from your senior monkey. Then you add it to yourself and then you carry on. But when you don't have, when you are not as, when you, you lack Skills or intelligence above a monkey. You never add on to what some your other person did just before you. Yeah. So, what I'm trying to say is that you have hopes for God. How many have dreams that you will, you will be God's child, God's servant? Raise your hand if you have such a dream. Uh-huh. It is nice. But you need 30,000 projects. That are practical. That will engulf you and engage you to make that dream come true. Yeah. Uh, and that's the hard part. Because faith without actions is no faith. So in other words, actions is the whole thing about faith. Actions is your faith. Actions is what shows that you have faith. If you say you love me, Right, and you disobey me, then your actions tell me that you do not love me. Yeah. The action is telling me louder than anything you can ever write or say that you do not love me because you do not obey. And that's what Jesus said if you love me, obey me. You cannot say that you love me and uh, just send me a card, say, I love you. When you, you don't obey what I'm saying, but you've written a card. That says, I love you. Uh. (laughs) Are you there? So, brothers and sisters, faith is all about actions. I will show you your faith. I will show you what you believe by observing your actions. Yeah. So, I pray that in addition to your great hopes, God will give you the strength uh, to also have faith. And to have faith means to have actions. How many will agree with me that to have faith means to have actions? Uh, Because I'll show you my faith by my actions. You see, if I didn't believe in you, if I didn't believe in you, I wouldn't be here and talking to you. For the past about four years, I haven't had any camp in Ghana, only with Alos. So, that, that should show you that in terms of my faith in the people that I believe can actually work for God tomorrow, and it, 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 whatever I say, even if I say all oh, this, this, but it will show you that. By my actions, I seem to believe that you people will actually work for God one day. Amen. That is why, that is why today, being a Sunday morning, I am not in my big glorious church to receive the adulation and the praises of men. And their congratulations. You understand? And the honor. But I'm rather with you to give you hope huh? for working for God tomorrow. Hallelujah. Are you understanding my message? So, sit down, sit down. So, 
Somebody can say something, but a time comes when you must watch his actions. Okay? So, for many of you, we are watching you. A time will come. You get it? Your actions will say whether you have faith or not. As for hope, I will not doubt that you have hope. But it's faith which I will doubt whether you have. And for that will not be too difficult to see. I will, sh- I will look for your actions to know the kind of faith that you have in what you are saying. How many believe all that I'm preaching? Is, is true. <laughs> is it? You, you have hope that it is true, but you don't really believe it yet. But with time, we will see whether it is important. Can I have an amen? amen. Now, faith is important for several important reasons. The first reason why faith is important is because we walk by faith. You can, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 7. Amen. Are you there? moving forward. We are moving forward. Uh You cannot move forward. You can say you move forward. You can talk about moving forward. Every company can expect that we will move forward. But it is the actions that actually make us move forward. And the Bible is telling us that we move forward Uh, by faith, with faith, with actions. If we really want to move forward, we need actions. Okay? So those of you who are politicians or spies, tell them that uh, because I hear now it's moving, we've moved from, um, we've, we've changed over to move forward. So since we've changed over and we are now moving forward, we need actions, okay, that engage us in forward movement. Not just arresting of people and harassing harassing of people, checking on their cars and all kinds of frivolous things. None of those things make us move forward. Mm -hmm. The reason why Politicians steal is still the same reason why they steal. And the reason that makes a politician steal money is there. The Bible says that the scepter of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot or the land of the righteous so that he may not put forth his hand into iniquity. So now, when you have wickedness over a nation, over a land, which does not allow people to harvest what they sow, do you understand? When you sow and you see all your crops, you watch as they is harvested away, and you don't eat some. It's wickedness. And that wickedness causes the righteous man to kill some of the people who are taking away his harvest. And fight them and poison them and do things. You understand? It's very, very difficult to be sinless when the scepter of the wicked is over the land of the righteous. It's true. You are a doctor, you are this, you are that, you are whatever. You 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 easily be a thief. That's why I stopped working for Kolebu. 
long ago. Because I saw that the scepter of the wicked, the leadership of ministry of health, was wickedness. And everybody under it will be forced to be a kind of a thief. Or you'll be forced to be some kind of wicked or evil person. Yeah. You see the three doctors who died? Yeah. One of them, the president came to visit the person, the, the wife, in the house before the, before the funeral. You see, at the house far away, down wherever, the, the cars cannot go there. You see, for this, uh, there are only about six of these type of doctors. You see, but when the president was come, they came to great the whole place so that he could drive there and drive back. You know, and during the funeral, the wife spoke out in her tribute, whatever, and said, I mean, there is no point in just coming to sing their praises when they are dead. When you don't even care for them and don't look after them in the right way. A few of them would like to stay. You understand? And they, when they are dead, right, they will do wicked things. You see that they are doing their own private work with the government equipment all the time. Oh. Huh? Is it not true? Yeah. Yeah. They have their own private surgeries. They will use the equipment, everything, charge. Uh huh. So you see that the people have been forced to do wicked things because they are under a scepter of wickedness. Because the Bible says that he that repayeth good with evil, evil shall never depart from. So when you, a surgeon or a doctor does good, and he's repaid with evil, poverty, deprivation, this. I cannot pay school fees. This is it. And evil has been returned to him for his good work that he has done. That is it. That is it. Now, I don't know how we got into all that. But I was explaining to you that moving forward is by faith. So faith is very important. How many have seen that faith? Is what makes you move forward. Hope doesn't make you move even one inch. When you have faith, you hope you don't move even one inch. You can never work for God until you have some faith. Okay? Because faith without action is dead. You know, one time there was a certain man who was good at um, walking on tight ropes there's a cross now these are real people are walking on tight ropes you get it yeah I mean I, I, I don't know why people choose certain jobs but this guy this guy was good at walking on tight ropes so he was able to put a wheelbarrow and walk across like that. And when he got across, everybody's clapping. Everybody, the whole place, quiet. Those on this side, not a word. Those on this side, everybody is like this. So the guy walked across. When he got to them, the hats were thrown into the air. People clapping, shouting. And he put a wheelbarrow like this. Then when he got to that, everybody was so happy, clapping. And he said, how many of you believe that I can put somebody in the wheelbarrow and push the person across the rope? A lot of people raised their hand, lifted us, oh, we believe you can. So he said, I want one person to come into the wheelbarrow from among the people who believe. Can you believe that not even one person volunteered? Did they have faith? They have hope that the person will survive. They have hope that it, it can happen. But they have no substance to their belief. Do you understand? So, faith makes you move forward. And without faith, you cannot move. 
That's why faith is very important. Number two, your faith is very important because you live by faith. In Hebrews chapter 10, are you there? And verse 36, it says, So you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For in a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. Verse 38, But the righteous one shall live by faith. Or the just, in the King James, the just shall live by his faith. So you cannot even live your Christian life without faith. You really need a lot of faith to walk even with God, to live just as a Christian. So those of you who think you are escaping something by just being a Christian without working for God, you are going to find it very difficult even just to be a Christian. Yeah, in fact, I would say that, you see, me. somebody told me when I was doing my exam, he said, look, always aim for very high. Aim to get A. So that when you bump, you get B or C. But if you are going to the exam, I'm aiming for C. I just want a C. And then you bump. Before you realize, you are repeating. So aim for A. Okay? So aim to work for God. If you fall, you will fall into good Christ. At least you'll be a good Christian. Then you'll die. But if you are aiming just to be a good Christian, I just want to attend my church. I just want to pay tithes. I just want to, uh, I don't want to fornicate. I want to be a decent married man. Such people, before you realize, they are now drinking Gouda, Gouda for men, or smoking Tosca for men. Yeah, Tosca for men. Cigarette without filter. That is Tosca for men. Only men smoke that one. No filter. You see that. They have now married different women, or even they don't even marry, and all kinds of complex lives that you would never even imagine. One day, I saw a certain sister in medical school. Have you heard of this term in uh, in uh, criminology? A serial killer. That is somebody who kills several people. Doesn't kill one person. Yeah. This girl was a serial fornicator. Now, we have fornicators and then we have serial fornicators. Yeah. Now, this girl was not only a serial fornicator, but a public, publicly acclaimed serial fornicator. What I mean by that is, she was open about it. Yeah, there was, she had no shame. Yeah. Her boyfriend was open. They, they were like, they were married. Whilst we were in the school. They were like, she was as if she was married. You get it? Now, one day, I had a great surprise of my life. The great surprise came when somebody who knew this serial uh, public fornicator from her secondary school came around and said, oh, this person is our SU SU president or SU leader. Yeah. Yeah. So, what I'm saying is, look, when you see somebody's beard burning, don't shout it. Stop praying about your hair. 
your synthetic hair that you have added to your hair. That one is more inflammable. When you see somebody's beard burning, go and fetch water. Put it by your side. Tell your neighbor, you better fetch some water for your beard. Are you there? You cannot, listen, what I am telling you is, how many are surprised at some of the things I have told you, like historically, like what Obama is doing, this person was doing, this one is doing. You see, this is what the Bible says. Now, is there anything that can be said? See, this is a new thing that has not been before. Do you get it? There's nothing like that. What has been is what shall be. And that which has been done is that which shall be done. So, be thinking about yourself. As you have been in school, it's like you are serving God, like you are flowing, you are on fire, you are the next person to shine for Jesus, you are the next apostle. For yourself and praying happily. Are you there? So aim high. Aim high. Don't aim to just be in a church and pay tight. What is tight? What is tight? Ten percent. Is that going to be your Christianity? Ten percent of your money. Come on, you must be joking. God did not give 10% of what he had. He gave his only son. He gave all. For you. Do you appreciate the love that God has shown to you? Yes. Amen. So brothers and sisters, you cannot walk without faith. You cannot live without faith. Now, Number three. You cannot please God without faith. You will never please God if all that you have is hope. Because in Hebrews... Chapter 11, verse 6. It says, And without faith, without faith, which is the same as saying without actions, without actions, it is impossible to please. God. It's impossible. Hmm. Without faith, huh? it is impossible to please God. Yeah. You can never please God. Huh? Cannot. Yeah. You cannot. You cannot. <laughs> oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. Some of you want to just, uh, you want to please God. You get it? But. Without believing in things in a way that makes you take some steps. You will never make God happy. God will never like you. Oh yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it though. I didn't say it. <laughs> I didn't say it. God will never like you. That he's happy with you. So happy with you. That to, for, for God to be happy with you, 
You have to believe some things and then take some steps based on those things that you believe. Uh And then you see that God becomes very happy in the house. Hmm? Without that, you can be there and say, Oh, I've not done this before. I don't do this. I'm not this. I've never this before. I am this and that. I never and God will be looking at you like that. Yeah. Because you've never been this before, you have never been a fornicator before. So what? You never saw a wicked man. That is why you never committed fornication. That is why. Oh yes. And some of you, you were not very beautiful when you were at a certain age. If you were as beautiful, (laughs) you'd be surprised. What would have happened to you? So you cannot boast in your life as I never did this. I've never done this. I've never done this. I've never done that. And so what? And so soak your Gary. of bad things. Because you see, I mean, a drunkard, you see that God has praised him. Hey, somebody who sleep with his mate, see that God has said, oh, this is my main man. Yeah. Hey. 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 But you see, all those guys, the thing about them is that they have some beliefs and then they, they acted on the beliefs. Yeah. That, that's what made them great. That's what made them please God. Yeah. God was pleased. You know, when somebody is pleased with you, you'll be surprised at what can happen in your life. That's why it's easy to criticize great men of God. Because when you look at them, you always find something wrong somewhere. But you'll be surprised. Eh? People are, you, you always say, people are deceived. That's why people are following this man. You always say, ah, people are deceived. People are deceived. People are deceived. That's why. That's why this, 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 this. Oh, people don't know. That is why. <laughs> uh, you don't know why God likes the person. Uh, may you please God. When God is looking for somebody who pleases Him, He will come and find you. You are the next person to please God. 
you are the next person to please God. In the name of Jesus, you will never displease God. You will never use your life to displease God. In the name of Jesus. Why faith is very important. Number four, you can never have a good report in heaven without faith. Yeah, you cannot move forward, you cannot live as a Christian, you cannot please God, and you will not. Have a good report in heaven without faith. Amen. Amen. What does verse 2 say? Hebrews 11. What does it say? For by it, the what? The elders obtained a good report. And what does verse 30 say? Verse 39. All these, what does it say in the King James? Having obtained a good report through what? Faith. All these guys, they did not obtain a good report because they were not into drinking. Because some of them were into drinking. Big time. They were men of sex. The guys in the Bible, they they were men of sex. Even, listen. I mean, we know they had a strong libido. The way they knew that David was almost dead was when they brought a beautiful young lady to the king. And he couldn't do anything. And he said, no, 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 no. This man. Then he's about to die. That's how they knew that he was about to die. Yeah. This was the limit. They had no other way to test life. But they didn't have lab tests to do. Blood urea and creatinine and liver function tests and other. So they brought a young lady, lady to come and see so after the, for about one hour, they say, what has happened? So oh, nothing has happened. He said, oh, then there is no life in our man. Hey! Even somebody like Elijah, no comment was made about any woman or anything, but in James, he said that men of like passions, that's why it's a mysterious it's a mysterious summary. Summarization. Summarization of the man. Men of like passion. Oi. When you see such words, you have to read between the lines. You know that they are trying to say something that they cannot say. So, brothers and sisters, you can never have that good report. It's like when I came to first year, I was told I have to do Afrostats. And I was a medical student. I entered first year, in our time, you enter first medical school or something else. And I entered straight, I was a medical student. But I had to do, what is that, that's African studies. Yeah. There were three parts to that thing. Some philosophical, what is it called? Is it philosophy or something? No, apart from the language. There was dancing, there was there was drumming, dancing. Yes, there's something with notes. 
Some something to ah? not a protect. Yeah, something with a lot of notes. I I I tell you, it was my most difficult subject. But you see, I have been told if you do not pass it, you cannot carry on. Yeah, you cannot graduate from the school. Yeah. So I had to pass it. And my most difficult was equapimpi. That is what I, I, I studied. Equapimpi. At first I started fanti. But no one knew that type of fanti that I knew. So I changed to equapimpi. Ah. Uh, Actually started. And I remember the final exam. You see, I realized that I was handicapped. And I, I needed, without it, without it, without it, I can pass here, 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 but that particular thing, I don't pass it. And I went for multiple choice questions in a Quapim tree. Hey. Now, I just want you to imagine that you are doing an exam in Korean. That was my knowledge of chi. I had no... When I saw the word, like 40 questions, that what I read, I don't know what is the meaning of anything on the paper. Hey! And an oral exam also. So, I pray, because the Bible says, wisdom strengthens a man, a city. More than ten mighty men can strengthen that same city. So when they were doing the uh, multiple choice questions, the man will read out the question and then read the answers out. And we are supposed to take which one is correct. And I had no, no it like like when they say, I don't know what they are saying. So, I decided on a strategy in the exam room. Because I cannot copy as a Christian. Yeah, because I live by faith. So, what I decided was that when they read out the question, people would burst out laughing. Because it was, so, it was wrong. You understand? Like they would say the sentence, like when you say the the fish has the fish ha, has uh, uh, the fish has jumped happily ever after. Then everybody will start laughing. That it is not a, a, a sentence. So I will I will just wait for them to laugh. They laugh here. They laugh here. They laugh here. They, laugh here. they didn't laugh here. This is the, <laughs> this is the correct one. <laughs> I said, oh, no problem. 
come. I will send you somewhere. So they came. As they came. You see, I said at first, a lot of people have hope. Then the actions, fewer. Then those who have the actions, as they go along, love removes some of them. So, some of them said, they wanted, I said, great, come. Then when we were choosing, I said, oh, I have a paper to do. I have this. When I finish this, this. When I finish this, then I said, oh. Then they were reducing. So, a number then became less. Then I met all those who have a paper. I have this, I have this. this. So, whenever you finish, so, we are coming. We are coming. Shelly. I'm still watching them. I'm watching them. Not that I'm watching them. I can't even see them on my radar. <laughs> like that Air France which has disappeared from the radar. They have also vanished off my radar. They are in the Atlantic. Mercy. So, you see, you better have some actions. Otherwise, you are not going to make it in the exam. Uh, because by it, that is what is used to get the good reports. That's it. Wow. How many things have I given you? What? Number one is what? Walk by faith. So, without, without faith, you cannot do what? You cannot move forward. Number two, without faith, you cannot, you cannot even live your Christian life. Number three, without faith, what? You will not please God. And number four, you can never have a good report. Number five, without faith, you will not be justified. Hmm. Romans chapter 3, you will not be justified before God. Chapter 3, verse 28. It says, for we maintain, we maintain that, hmm, that what? A man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. We maintain that a man is justified by faith. Amen. You see, do you want to be made right? Do you want everything to be made right? How many realize that you feel wrong sometimes and you like things to be just as if it never happened. Uh, how many want it to be just as if it never happened? So just as if it never happened is called justified. To be justified means to be just as if it never happened. And you will never be justified without faith. You see, surprisingly, a thousand good works will not make you justified. It's even an insult to God. He's so holy. You are insulting him that he's, he wasted his son on the cross. When you could have been a good person without that whole sacrifice. You are insulting him so he wasted your time. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Supposing I'm sending you to uh, Iraq or Iran. Or let you take somewhere else, like Sudan. Because I'll be sending some of you to Sudan soon. Yeah. To the desert. Now, if Michael Asian and these other boys can go to Sudan, to go and play. Then you too, you can go to that same Sudan to go and preach the gospel. Yeah. Don't sit there and be imagining other things. I'm talking of fire. Now listen. Are you there? What was I saying? Yeah. If you want to be just as if it never happened, it's not going to be by a series of things. Like, suppose I said I was sending you to Sudan and I go there. To make a whole lot of preparations for you. 
I get this, I get this, I get this, I get this. When you arrive in Sudan, I'm at the airport to see you. And I prepare. And then I organize this and that and that. And when you, you greet me, I say, it's fine, it's okay, yeah. And then suddenly you make a text and somebody else comes there. You know? Then it's like, whoa. You don't, need, you don't even need all the things that I've done. Because you have your own contacts in Sudan. And so it's like, I mean, I've wasted my time. You should have told me that you had another way or you had somebody have been there organizing so many things for you. And it's like, you don't even need what I'm doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So you see, when you can make it anyway without Christ, all these sacrifices come to die on the cross and so on, you can be right by doing some right things or by not doing some things according to your estimation of righteousness. Then there is no need of Christ. And there's no need of the cross. And that is why it says you will only be justified by your faith. Do you get it? You, you will not be justified. Sometimes, sometimes people tell me that, oh, you have a heart for, you know, you're able to accommodate people. It's about accommodating. It's, it's not about accommodating. It's about the reality. The truth of the matter is that our righteousness is not by what we have done or what we haven't done. Or the things we are able to not do and the things we are able to do. Yeah. Because that depends on who you are and where you are being brought up. Yeah. And in whose hands you fall. If the scepter of the wicked falls upon your lot, Charlie, you are doomed. So, God justifies us by faith. So, He's giving you a chance. Giving you a chance. That chance is not dependent on your sexuality. It's true. The sexuality there, it is there. How many feel it? Okay. Your righteousness. So, when we say God is a holy God, He's a holy God. Inhabits separate. When, when you say God is holy, it means that He doesn't have sexual desires. Is that, is that what you are trying to say about God? No, no. Holiness has nothing to do with sex. You you feel bad because of your sexual feelings. Uh-huh. But when you say God is holy, 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 and that, I used to say God is able to control His sexual edges and His erections and so. On. Ah, come on, man. Give me, give me, give me a break. <laughs> No, 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 no. You see? That's why you must focus on whom you want to please. That's many times people don't know, especially when you people go and work. People don't know who to please. Yeah, you must always know who to please. You have to know who to please. You may please yourself. You may please somebody who is not important. So you may please people. But you must know who to please. For things to work well for you. Yeah. And, and, and when you are working for God, you must please God. And God, you know, He has said what pleases Him. And what you, without which you cannot please Him. And how you are justified before God. Rejoiner had a vision, but he didn't tell If ever I meet Rejoiner, it's one of the questions I would ask him. The Lord took him to some thrones and he saw a great man of God who had fallen before he died. And the man was high in a very glorious throne. And the Lord didn't say anything about it. The Lord said, I wanted you to see where he was. Yeah. And that was it. That you, you can't talk to him. He was not allowed to speak to him. He was not allowed to talk to him. But I just wanted you to see where he was. Yeah. Have you seen it? It's in the final quest. Have you seen it? That, that, that story there. Yeah. Huh? No, it's there. It's there. There was a guy, a, a great man of God. You remember? You remember? Yeah. You see, how you see and how God sees is quite different. So God has his own way of seeing people. And that's why sometimes we are surprised at who God uses. 
Do you see? So I'm just trying to give you a hint and a clue that God really likes people who have faith. It justifies them. It makes wrong things right. It makes their badness correct. I tell you. It makes their mistakes and everything somehow straight before God. It justifies. It's like it's justified. It is meant that everything justified before God by His faith. You see, like Moses the Medra. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was not a Medra. Because they said, throw the snake, the thing, they become a snake. Throw that this thing down, it becomes whatever. But even when you watch the film of Moses, you always wonder why Pharaoh doesn't arrest him. Each time he goes and he comes, why doesn't he arrest him and kill him? And you think it did not occur to Moses that he could be arrested the next time he shows up with this story. And what about when you, you come and you throw, you throw the, give me that uh, rod there. You just come like And you say, who sent you? you say, I am sent me. You see, you are risking your life. You see, and I'm saying that he's, it's true that he's committed murder. But what he's doing now eh, is justifiable. It's, it's not a murder is good though, but it's justifying Moses as a murderer before God. I'm telling you. Justifying him, I tell you, a, a clear a killer. So now, who sent you? I am sent me. So, how can I know who is this God who sent you? What is his name? Say, I am. This is a sign. Look, everybody, look. This is a sign that I am sent me. I'm going to throw this down. And say, what about if he doesn't? Look. You see here, he's risking, he's risking his life. Oh. That is why, that is why his murder was justified. And then his marriage to that girl. That Jethro uh, uh, daughter, it was also justified. So when you start tackling such people eh, and start accusing them and so you are dealing with certain eternal righteousness which God has God has written. This man is holy, righteous man. And you you see him as a murderer, he has married, wrong whatever, and all kinds of things. So he stands there with that. That thing that he did, eh? Who sent you? When I put this on the crown, it is going to turn into a snake. Watch. Look. It did not turn into a snake. Now here I am. I will start urinating. I will start urinating. How many of you think that I will start we win right now. God, where are you? God, where are you? Now I'm going to show you another sign. I'm going to put my hand. When I bring it out, it's going to My life depends on this. <laughs> have, you, have you ever wondered when we are having miracle services that we don't call a particular cripple and say, come. Today you will walk. Today be today you will walk. Crusade will be spot right there and there. But that is what Moses did. He said, Watch. Has it changed? Pharaoh will look at you and say, You are a damn fool. 
are you are you are you are a twerp. You are a twerp. You are a nitwit. Nikon poop. Stupid fool. Idiote. In, in, in Italian, we don't say idiot. Idiote. 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 Ah. Uh, BNI. BNI. Just take him away. And also, where is my personal assistant and the arranger? The one who is in charge of my protocol and so on. Arrest him also. Let's, and call, when, when they call the guy, say, listen, come. Come, come. You are uh, arranging a protocol. Stand here. Let this be the last time that I will have idiots brought before me to come and waste my time. When I'm building, when I'm building, it's too late. You have lost your job. When I'm building Ramses and Pharaoh, other cities, you waste my time with idiots like this Moses and crazy guys with dreams and visions from their lunacy and schizophrenic minds. Ah, you, are, you have lost your job. Away with her. Hey, away with her. You see, so as for Moses, God really liked him. Uh, justified. You see, some of you, you've got a whole lot of issues that need to be justified. We justify sleeping with that boy. We need to justify sleeping with that girl. We need to justify some abortions. But we need to justify stealing. You need to justify apostles stealing in examinations. Yeah. You need to justify some of your jealousy. Some of your lies. Satanic lies. You need to justify some of your laziness. And your wickedness. Yeah. And without some actions of faith, you will not be justified. You need faith. Yeah. So that's why sometimes you see somebody is like his life is going. Let, 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 but you see, like he has faith, he's trying to press. God likes the person. He's forcing through. Not perfect, though. It's not perfect. But he's trying to do things because of his beliefs. He's trying. see some righteous I haven't done this before I haven't done this before I don't do this I always do this I pay tithes I give offerings I don't I'm always in church I'm in the building committee I'm in the children's church I never feel this I never do this you're, you're Self-righteousness has blinded you to seeing the spirit of pride in you. Yeah. You need some, you need some faith, some actions. Yeah. I tell you. And you'll be surprised. That's why Jesus said the publicans and the sinners are entering faster. So some of you here, there are some guys, as I'm speaking today, they are, you consider them as dirty sinners. Oh yeah. Some of them will come and overtake you. You have despised them. And you watch and see. Even some of our best missionaries, they were not even elders on campus. When they were choosing elders, they, they looked down on them. They said, oh, this guy is not proper. This guy is not. They were not. They were nothing. They were not even elders. Yeah. And today, some of them are head. 
head of missionaries in countries and different places. Oh yeah. So me, I try always to see with God's eye. Yeah, especially people with faith. Oh. One day I went somewhere, one of my pastors had come to commit fornication. I saw that the church members were coming to. I took my stick. I said, you. You better move back before I break your head with this stick. Yeah. And you should see how he's doing well today. Yeah. You are just passing that. If, if you have been in that circumstance. Huh. That's why Elijah's life was summarized with just one sentence. A man of life. Are you there? Yeah. Sit down. Number six. You cannot. What is the number one? Huh? Yeah, you cannot walk, isn't it? Without what? Faith. And what again? Huh? You cannot live without faith, isn't it? And then what again? You cannot please. How many are going to try and please God? Wow. What again? You cannot have a good report without faith. What's the next one? You cannot be what? You cannot be justified, isn't it? The next one. You cannot inherit the promises of God without faith. Amen. Moses, he tried. How many realize that he tried? In spite of the woman that he married. Which Miriam saw. Miriam saw correct. It's in the Bible. You should not take wives of these people. See, but you are 40 years in the wilderness burning with these young, young, beautiful girls running around. You see. A man of life passes. And he decided to take one of them and break the laws of uh, whatever. Do you get it? Mm. Charlie, how for do? Based on his condition. Yeah. You know, in this book, uh, Rick Joyner's book on uh, um, what is the name? Um, um, the last little one. What is it? When God walked on the earth. Huh? That book. You know, Jesus was in the wilderness. In that book. Jesus was in the wilderness. And then he was very, very hungry. You know, and he saw the bread. I Either after the temptation or during the temptation, he said, I have begun to appreciate some of these things that humans struggle with. He said it, isn't it? Yeah. He saw that, Charlie. We are, we are suffering. <laughs> he saw it, uh, Charlie. Okay. The next one. Uh, Hebrews 6. Have you found Hebrews 6? Verse 12.
Are you there? Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. What does it say? Followers, amen, of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hmm? What has God promised? You see, what are those dreams that you heard about? You get it in the hopes messages. Do you get it? You know, at the beginning, it was also a prophecy for those of you who are going to be pastors of churches. That God has a big church for you. Bigger than my church. Amen. 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 Yeah. He's giving you a key that you should never forget. Yeah. For tomorrow, one day you will see that this is your main key. You see, you'll be preachers of hope. And add some substance. Amen. Amen. But you see, you can never inherit these things without actions. Yeah, it's all theory. But you need actions to make things real. So there comes a time we don't listen to you speaking. We watch what you do. And by that, you are judged by your actions. So God is going to give us things, promises. Amen. What do you hope for? Be ye followers of them who through faith and and patience inherit the promises. Every one of us has come into Christianity with a lot of promises for our lives. Promises that this will happen, this will be your portion, you will experience this, you will have this, this is what will happen, this, this, this. But without actions of a certain kind, you will never experience. You will only read about it. You know, I thank God for some of the things that I have seen. But I inherited them only by actions. I have seen the blind eyes opened. Something I used to read about. (laughs) I read about it. How many have read about it too? Have you read about it? I've read about it. Whatever you've read about is a promise. But, but will you ever see it? Will you ever inherit it? I've read about blind eyes open. I've read about deaf people who cannot hear. Hearing. I've seen it. Huh? It, it, it have like promises to you one day. I was in France when the Lord spoke to me that he was going to give me, he was giving me a healing ministry as well. Yes, yeah, like it's a promise. I was in France. I was lying on a bed in France. Yeah. Praying. Fasting and praying. Oh, Lord. Move, Lord. Move. My best prayer times are alone. All alone. With the Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. God said, okay, I'll give you a healing mission. So, is it true? Is that your imagination of what you want? Then, you get it. You get it. I've seen it. I've seen dead raised. I've seen it before. I've seen somebody testify. I didn't say that the person is dead and that he's alive. The person is seen. That person is saying, my child was dead. And my child is alive. Not that I called the person and said, Tell them, tell us, say that he was dead. No. I've seen it. Will you see it? I've seen my church grow. Dreams. I saw Young Cho. I've seen my church grow from five people to twenty to thirty. When I stood before Professor Aite, I explained to him that I had about forty, and I was even, you know, pastors we usually give the upper leg about forty people. Yeah, I gave him the upper. There are about 40 people. Please allow us to use the medical school auditorium. I remember in my corridor, 
upstairs at the school of hygiene. And I said to myself, if I have a hundred people in the church, I have achieved my life's goal. I don't need anything again in the world. I see hundred people come to church. I don't need anything again in the whole world till I die. Yeah. Hundred. I'm telling you. Hundred is not a small number. <laughs> God gave me a dream many years ago. In the dream, I was walking along a path that was going like this. And then I came to a heap of... At first I thought it was sand. And when I got closer, I saw that it was a heap of gold. It was a heap of gold. Like, just like a heap of sand and stones. It was gold. When I saw I said, wow, I said, ah, ah. And I was, what was worrying me was I didn't have any big bucket or will barrels or anything to take this thing. So I didn't I wanted to I wanted to do something in that dream. You know, then suddenly the Lord said to me, No, I shouldn't stop there. I wanted to end my life at that heap. And I said, No, 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 no. Yeah. Don't. On the path that I have called you, there are many of these same heaps. So take what you need. So I took what I needed from my pocket. You know, because it was it was a heap of sand on the road. So a heap of I took big heap like this. I put it in my pocket. So, oh you you there's plenty and it's not that I've dreamt it all, but I've seen it. Oh, it's on the road that I'm on, I have seen it more and more. Recently I found some money. You know, somewhere. I was I was arranging some things and I saw that my not much, maybe about three hundred CDs or something. Three hundred CDs of farmer CDs. So it's just there. And I didn't know that I had that money. Then it occurred to me that God has blessed me so much that when I have lost three hundred CDs I have not noticed it. And, and, and all, all the money was in 50s. So it was very flat. Yeah. So it was like 300, 300 seats or 400 seats. I think 3 or 4. I'm not even sure even. You see, I, I'm not even sure. Right? Three or four. Because 300 or 400 doesn't change my life much. Mm. It's fantastic. Uh, that's why I said that. You may come and inherit the church. But if you miss the wisdom keys that he had, the senior monkey gave me you will remain a baboon for the rest of your life. In fact, perhaps the first session was the most important session. You may never know. The one on hope. We are now on faith. Before we come to love. Before we come to first love. Are you listening to me? Yeah. What does the Bible say? God has, uh, what do you call it in the pro- delight in the prosperity? Some verse like that in Psalms. These are verses people quote when they want to be rich. God has delight in the prosperity of his servants. These are verses people like. I don't even know where it is, but I've seen it. Yeah. It's true. Fantastical. But you see, will you ever see it? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. When he said, These things to the Gentiles seek, but you, you, 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right. And this thing shall be added. Will you ever see it practically? Does it depend on me? It doesn't depend on me. It depends on you. I can never prevent the word of God from coming. Then I'm greater than the word of God. I'm a block. I'm a dam. When God's word is coming to pass, I move around. I stop it. No, don't, don't be fulfilled for this person. No, don't be fulfilled for this person. No, don't be fulfilled for this person. Yeah. Somebody can say, oh, the church. Is it only not only you and so and so? You and you and you and you that are prospering in the church. Then I'm greater than God. Because all that God has in his word, I am the preventer of, of all those things happening. Are you listening to me? How can I prevent the word of God from happening in your life? Huh? Am I, am I greater than God? Hmm. Then why do you think that I, I can prevent the word of God from happening? I cannot. You get it? What are your dreams? What are your dreams? You see, it says that by faith they inherited the promises through faith and patience. Be followers of people who have inherited or when you say inherit, you have actually seen it happen. You see, my father when he died, my father built a hotel. I've inherited a hotel before. A hotel. I never built a hotel, but I owned a hotel at a point because I inherited it from my father. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. Uh, I inherited the hotel. I didn't have it. I just in- suddenly became the owner of it. So when I say when they say you inherit the promise, it means suddenly you will experience what is your, the promise of God for your life. Ah, how can it happen? Uh, it has to happen by faith and patience. That's the love. Love is patience. First one. <laughs> so through hope, we can now exercise faith. And then you need some patience. Yeah. Because see, I was 25 years old when I became a pastor. Do you understand? And this same church. I've been pastoring this church from what time is 1988? What year are we in? How many years is that? 21 years. Yeah. And I've been a leader campus from 1982. How many years is that? Just like you. Huh? 1982. 27 years. Ah. So you want faith without patience. Like we are sending you as a missionary. Suddenly you want to drive such and such a car. Do you know the car? Do you know Bimbola? I had a car with something we call Bimbola. Yeah. Because we could not afford petrol. In my, in my, in my, in my family. We could not afford petrol. So we, we, we discovered that the car, the car can be turned into gas. And that's so we buy cooking gas. And then we had a connector. Special connection. We made it in Tema. Near the roundabout. There was a fitter there. Who was an expert at making bimbola. We call it a bimbola. Myself and Bishop Sakin. Bishop Eddie. We went. We took our cars there. And we sat there in the yard. And we made a bimbola. We buy cooking gas and we put it in. And we go in, we count in the kilometers that we can go. We are missionaries to Ghana. And you, you are a missionary to somewhere. Suddenly you want to, Mr. Big Staff, who works for the United Nations. Your mouth like onion. Mr. Big Shot. That's why some of you have to go to the world first. That you may learn the difference between working for Pharaoh and working for God. When you go to work for Satan for some time. Spend your years in fruitlessness. 
Are you there? Yeah. Faith. What you have believed, you see. I've seen blind somebody's eyes was blind. I've seen somebody standing on the chair shout, I can see, I can see, I can see, I can see. I've seen it before. I've seen it before. Not that somebody, not that I read it. I've seen it. <laughs> In different, different countries. Shouting and jumping. I can see. I can see. Hey. It's wild though. Same people come out of wheelchairs. The wheelchair says, I could not walk. I can walk. I've seen people come out of wheelchairs and come back the next day and the husband will say, for what I have seen, I did not believe in God and I did not believe in your church. But because of what I've seen, my wife has come out of a wheelchair who could not even stand like this. I believe in God. I've seen it before. But I read it about Smith Wigglesworth and uh, Kenneth Hagin and all those things. What I'm trying to say is that you need actions to make things that are imaginary, that are in the Bible, happen practically in your life. And without faith, it will never happen, although you live for a thousand years. You will never, never see all these things happen. Yes. Are you there? How many do you have? I'm a seven. Read Romans chapter 5. I think I need my King James Bible as well. Next session maybe. Yes. Have you found Romans chapter 5? Verse 2. Have you found it? Okay. What does it say? Amen. Access. You cannot have access except you have faith. Amen. Access. We have unto whom we have access. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through whom we have also obtained access. What does it say? By faith. Amen. How many of you want to be close? How many realize that you are far? Hmm? Your, your faith will bring you close. What do you think? You see, Rahab? Rahab? I don't think she was uh, among the list of bishops and popes. She was among the list of serial fornicators. Public Syria. But she changed her list. She changed her list. Her name is there. And she changed her list because what? There, you see, there is no, nothing you can do on earth to erase certain things. Except one thing. Mm. I don't know whether you are getting what I'm saying. You see, like sometimes when, you, when something has happened, it's sort of like you can't change it. But you can change it. You can't change it in the natural, but you can change it. But there's something you can do by faith. I was watching uh, Reverend Eastwood on the television. He was talking about the death of his children. You know? And... Um, he was saying there's anything he could do to change it. To bring his children back. There's anything he would do it. You know. There are many things like that in life. You, you want to change it. But you can't change it. 
Now, one of the things that sometimes we really want to change are the mistakes we have made in our lives. Do you get it? Mm. Yeah. Some of the sins and the things. Do you see? Now, when you think about, let's say, fornication, what can you do to undo fornication? Physically, I'm just trying to imagine what to do. <laughs> you see? So, when we talk about justified by faith, it's a very, for God to say, faith can justify you. Then he has shown us one of the highest keys for our lives. And it is that faith, when you have it, you become, you see, like Rahab. She joined another group as if she is a bishop. A reverend minister. Just as if it never happened. You know, her, her work was prostitutional. Officially and publicly. But, it's possible to justify yourself through your actions of faith. Yeah. As if it never happened. Now, that justification, after you are justified in verse 1, makes you have access. Because if you were not justified, you could not come close. You get it? You need to be made right in order to come close. Come closer to me. Closer to me. I want it. Can you people play this song? Your, your sound on your piano is terrible. Change the, the tone. The nastiest sound ever. But listen. Listen. You cannot be brought close unless you get things right. One day there was a certain brother. He was a lay pastor. And he wanted to be closer and closer. And I told him something. I said, oh yeah. If you obey God and go where you're supposed to go, far away into the east or wherever, you'll get closer to me. I told him. It's a fact. If you go further away, but more into faith, you will join my fellowship. Hmm? And it's true. Since he went out there, he's become closer to me. And you see, when you go out there, you need to go through some struggles, some challenges, and overcome them. That's what makes you close. Access by faith. Access. Faith is actions. It's your actions that justify you. Your actions, by, after being justified, therefore make way for somebody like you and somebody like me to come close to God. Yeah. And there are actions you can take that make, they wipe out everything negative. I tell you. In fact, today I'm feeling very happy that there is something that can justify how many are also having that feeling within you that something can justify just as if never happened? Yeah. Wow. How many are glad about that? It's only those of you righteous ones who are sinless, holier than the rest of us. Who have nothing that needs justification by faith. But I need justification by faith. How many need justification by faith? Hey. So begin to flow. Begin to flow in the actions of faith. Believe. Everything in the Bible you can see it one day. I tell you. It, it is possible. What, what aspect? You can see it. The day somebody insults you and calls you Satan, it's a promotion. Huh. See that? You have reached a realm. It's a 
certain troubles are even promotions. You have to see. When I told Archbishop Duncan Williams, I told I was with him at a, a certain building. I think Ron Kenoli had come. We were both at that program. We were standing outside on the car park. And I told him that the IRS had started an investigation on me. That invited me. I sent my account and they said, no, he must come himself. And I had to go there. Sit down for interrogation. And I, they gave me some forms. When we showed that form to somebody, worker, I said that this form is not used. It's a high level investigation criminal criminal investigation form that they have given us to fill. So when I told him, I was standing with him and I was talking, I said, look, these people have called me. I was surprised. I looked at the ground. He had stretched out his hand like that. I said, why? He took myself. Congratulations. I filled that form five times. That same form. He stretched out his hand. He was rather congratulated. He said, this form, I've done it five times. <laughs> there are certain troubles when you come into them. We will now congratulate you. I said, welcome. You are coming closer by your actions. You are being elevated into a certain fellowship. Some of you, you are men of straw. A man of straw is the paperweight. There is nothing to your finances. I mean, your account is just in name. There is nothing to you. There is no investigation. Will take one second to finish investigation. You are just as you are. And the investigation is over. God will bless you until you are, you are of importance for setting crisis, setting raging waters that can sweep you away. And Jehovah will lift up his hand and say, Leave my servant. That's when you, you now be join a certain fellowship. Yeah. And then you come closer. Hmm? Some of you don't have access because you've never taken certain steps. And as the years have gone by, I've noticed myself going apart from people, certain groups of people, and getting closer to other groups of people. It's all based on the steps you are ready to take. So that we all suffer together. And we die together with what, with what we believe. Yes. 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 You say, your mother said this, this, this. Your father said ah, It's me too. My mother said this. And me to my father said this. So when you are coming to give us that story, it has no, it's good even that your mother should oppose you from being, if you have a good mother or a good father, she will not just allow you to enter the ministry like that. It's people whose parents are not active in their life who just allow them to, you finish school, say you are going to work in a church. And your parents are not active. If they are active, they will not just sit down for you to just go into something that looks as foolish as as that. What? You say that your father is not allowed. It's good. You shouldn't allow it. That's where we see whether you are called or not. That's where we see whether you have actions or not. Or just hopes. Yeah. That's where we see the difference. The differences become clear when steps have to be taken. Amen. Amen. Uh, are you there? How many do you have? Seven. I think it's enough. You are more. Stand to your feet. Lift your hand and ask God to. Hmm. Are you going to ask God for faith? Huh? How many realize that your faith is not so much? Hey. 
But you see, even though you don't have much faith, God can still use you. You get it? Look at this. Hold it. Your life is at stake. You see, and you want to be like Moses, where your life will never be at stake. You have to do something that your life will be at stake. Your future will be at stake. Your existence will be at stake. And you have never done anything that your life is at stake. Or your future is at stake. Or your existence is at stake. You have never done anything like And you want to be at the same level and have access to people like Moses. When your life has never been at stake before. Rahab's life was at stake. Everybody who followed God, his life has been at stake before. But you don't want your life to be at stake. That's why sometimes, you know, when people go and follow Pharaoh after some time, and then they realize that they are getting what they thought they would get. I think your battery is going off again. Is it a Chinese battery? You may laugh at a Chinese, but we don't make batteries in Ghana. Every battery is imported. Diminishing returns. Activities of diminishing returns. Oranges, cocoa, gold, bauxite, pineapples. You read it. Hello? Everything is off. Hello? Okay. What sound is that? Let me hear. It's not tuned well. Reduce the mid ranges of that, that line. The middle, the middle part. Reduce it. Huh? Is that an equalizer on your thing? Uh huh, it's getting better. I increase the treble to the top. Base to the top, middle down. Okay? Is it getting better? Play less here. But it's better. All right. Hello? Are you better off here? Okay. What was I telling you? You have never risked your life before. And you want to be close to me. You can never be close to me if you've not risked your life for the ministry. You will never. You may be moving around, but you have to also risk your life. Hmm? I mean, I put my life on the thing. <laughs> You've not raised your life. I should be close to you. I don't know what is in your mind. You can never know when, whether somebody loves you unless the person obeys. Look, I, as I'm growing, I, said, I love you. If you love me, you let me kiss you. Let me do this. You see, Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Now, you will grow for a thousand years. You will come to see that the greatest expression of love is obedience. Yeah. So somebody will say, I love you. I love you. Oh, here is my love. I bought the biggest card as big as a suitcase. I love the, the card. The card is as big as a suitcase. The, the size of a suitcase. It doesn't, it doesn't, that's not what measures your love. All the words in the card, you underline some of them so that the person sees the words. Highlight them. Meanwhile, we are not even reading that. And you have highlighted it too. Now, your love is proved by what you do. I tell you. And as I've grown up, I realize that it, you will come down to that. Do what I say. That's why love between married couples reduces as the years go by. Uh, I mean, spontaneous love. Because I remember one, a certain brother, he went to visit a potential wife. And when he got there, oh, she was smiling. I told you, 
smiling, nodding. Signs, seven signs of charm. Have I given you the seven signs of charm? Oh, write it down. Number one, smiling. <laughs> smiling. Isn't it? Number two, nodding. Number three, agreeing. Number four is what? Flowing. Flowing is like, yes! <laughs> Number five, never disagreeing. You see, and you see that the brothers, they even feel that they are God. That is the house that you see that you are the Lord of Lords. It is where you go and visit that person. That you see your powers as the Lord of Lords has come. But after you marry, you see that your Lord of Lords powers are finished. <laughs> the next one, hard working. Can I get you some this? Can I do this? Oh, moving with energy. After you, you have married, you see that the energy is finished. Number, number what? Seven. Eagerness. The person is eager. Number eight. The, uh, the, the person is eager. It's like, yes, I want to. So you, the brother, as you are going to marry the person, the person will, will, will you have a, Yes! It's like, so the person is eager. <laughs> of course. This is what I want to do. I can't wait. I can't wait. Eagerness is. Number. Oh, I forgot the number eight. I said number seven is what? Number eight. Nice dressing. For you. Nice dressing. Where the person looks sharp. I mean, we are talking of Sister Sharp. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she looks super califragilistic, expialidocious. and see what is worn in the house. The person is more than a lance corporal in the army. Aye! Hair? Hair? And then, what is happening to my son now? And then the hair is well, because the, in the house, the hair will be covered. Hmm? Captain Haddock's hat has come on it. The hair is covered. Number, number what? Number 10. Makeup. Any form of makeup on the face, cream. Look, there are some people. You see, and when I say charm, up, upon arrival, they put everything down. Wash the face. See, that one is not for the household. That charm was for outside. So that's why the face is washed in the house. So that the realities will come forth. So brothers must learn to look at sisters and see those who have got makeup, then eyelashes. Number 11. Charms. Eyelashes. 11. Eyelashes. 12. Eyebrows. You see that the eyebrows, just look at a brother's eyebrow. That, that is the real eyebrow that is in the world. The real eyebrow in the world is like a brother's eyebrows. Do you think that God made your eyebrows different from my eyebrow? That is how the eyebrow, look at my eyebrow carefully. Look at my eyebrow carefully. Then, 13, finger 
nails. Yeah, finger nails. Then, number 14, toe nails. You see, when you mind them, they, you will see that they are now biting the finger nails. And they will say, what are you doing? <laughs> I bite. They, they don't quite cut it all, just biting, chewing the, the nails. <laughs> Number 16. 15. Necklace. Ne- it has an effect on a lady with a necklace and a lady without a necklace. There is a difference. Uh, number 17. Earrings. Now these are all, they are not lustful things. Oh, but I want you to see that they are Additions to charm. And charm means to be pleasing and nice. Some of you think we are joking here. There is no joke here. You are the one laughing. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. You are the one who is laughing. Be careful you don't become a monkey. Number 19. Necklaces, earrings is number what? 15 is what? 16 is what? 17 bangles. The bangles on the hand. What do you call it? Bracelet bangles. It adds to the charm. I'm not saying they are not good or they are nice. But we want it in the house too. Uh, so that we know that it's real. What is in the house is what is outside. Uh, that's all. That's all we are saying is that whatever is out should be also there. So that is one way. Yeah. We are not against it, but only that we want it in the house. Okay. What are we talking about? Faith. But how do we get into this? Okay. Huh? Access. 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 God will give you access when you have faith. Yeah. Your actions will prove. Not your talking. Uh Uh-huh. Love. See? You really know love when you get into the real reality. Not the talking part. It's charm. So that's what God is saying. A lot of us are lost people. We say we are going to serve God. We want to be missionaries. This and that. If I send you to Nigeria, some of you may run away. Yeah. Last year some people came. I said I was going to send them to Nigeria. They thought I was joking. I sent all of them there. All of them. Because I've told you, me, I don't joke. Because some time ago I saw people laughing at somebody. I didn't like it. Since that I don't laugh at people. It is my wife who laughs at people, Bishop Saki. They are the ones who laugh at me. I don't laugh at anybody. And I don't joke. Hey, you may be laughing, but I'm serious. Yeah. You may be laughing, but me, I'm serious. All the time I'm saying that, champs. You think it's a joke? Be there. When it happens, write a letter to me. <laughs> write to me. Say, Eagerness, eagerness, flowing, agreeing, never disagreeing. Uh, Smiling, is it in in the list? Number one, smiling. Batting, batting, number number eighteen, batting. Okay. How many are going to exercise faith to follow the Lord? Stand up, everybody. Stand up. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11.
number 3. Hebrews 11, number 3. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Amen. So that what is seen are made out of things which are invisible. Amen. Are you excited by that? So now, I'm going to give you a list of things that you can accomplish practically in your life. Amen. Through your faith. Okay? A list of things that you can accomplish practically in your life. Amen. Are you excited? Okay? Now, number, look at James chapter 2, verse number 16. Uh, verse number 17. Even so, faith, if it has no works, it is dead, being by itself. But someone may well say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Amen. I will show you my faith by my works. Amen. What do you think? Is it fantastic? Okay. I will show you my faith by what? My works. So I'm going to give you a list of works that you practically are going to accomplish through your faith that is being added to your hope. What do you think? You have faith, okay, based on the hopes that you have. And then love is going to be added on to that great faith. How many want that list of things, works, that you will do? Do you want it? Will you do it? When I give you the list, will you do it or you will not do it? Are you sure you will do it? Are you sure you will do it? Are you sure you will do it? Because it's now time for the 30,000 projects. Did I tell you about President who? Roosevelt. Preach hope. By the time came, 30,000 projects for 4 million jobs in one day. Hmm? Yeah, 4 million jobs. Four million Ghanaians can be employed tomorrow if we decide we are going to build this road, do this, moving all kiosks out of Accra. We are building a place for cars. We are building a place to sell toilets. We are building a place to sell this. We are building this. We are building another dam here. We can have four million jobs tomorrow if we have a leader who has actions. Hmm? Fantastico. So, Lift up your right hand and say, I can do it. I can. I can. I know I can. I can do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am a man of faith. I have faith. Faith in God. Mm, I am justified. Mm, I am justified. I'm justified of all my past sins. I'm justified by faith. Faith in God. My actions are showing my faith. I'm a man of God. A man of faith. I walk by faith. I am moving forward by faith. I am pressing ahead by faith. I see myself moving. I see myself moving. I see myself advancing. By faith. I have faith. Now. Today. Now. Now, now. Now, now, now. I have faith now. I can do it now. In the name of Jesus. I am living by faith. I am living by faith. I am a man of faith. I live by faith. I live by my faith. One day, 
I shall have a good report. A very good report. A very good report. I see a very good report. I claim a good report. I take a good report. By faith, I shall have a good report. My actions shall prove my faith. I have faith. All the promises, I shall see them. Practically, they will happen in my life. I will experience them. Practically, one by one, one by one, one by one, little by little, they will happen by faith. I shall work for God. I shall do His will. I shall build His church. Because I'm a man of faith. I am not a doubter. I'm not a doubter. I am a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I live by my faith and I walk by my faith. How can I doubt? I am a believer. Doubt is a thief of my faith. From today, I declare I am not afraid. I am not doubting. I am believing. Through faith, I shall move every mountain. I am making it. I declare I am making it. I have made it. Pass, I am passing barriers. You know, I just saw in the spirit people passing through some barriers. You shall pass through every barrier in your life in Jesus' name. You are breaking forward out of every preventive circle around you. In the name of Jesus. Say after me, I'm breaking forth. I'm one of the soldiers. I am one of the soldiers in the army of the Lord. I refuse to be a civilian. I refuse to be a lay person. I refuse to be retired. I cannot retire now. I'm going to fight on. Fight on. Fight on. Fight on. on. While I have the light. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord. I shall fight. A good fight. A good fight. Not a foolish fight. A good fight. Of faith. Through me, many people will be turned to righteousness. Through me, point to yourself. Through me, through me, many people will be helped, will be saved, will be blessed, will be delivered. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm justified by faith. Jesus is my first love. He's my first lover. And my first love. I love my Jesus. I will love Jesus first. I will give Jesus all my love. All my life. All my sweetness. All my goodness. I will give it to Jesus. Because I love my Jesus. I am sold out. I am committed. One day, Ghana was playing a match. I think Africa Cup or something. And then the goalkeeper was trying to catch a ball. And he ran. I don't know whether a Ghana goalkeeper or another goalkeeper. He ran this way. And died that way. But then the ball was passed here and was coming through another side. So the commentator shouted. He shouted. The goalkeeper is already committed. <laughs> the goalkeeper is already... That, that means that he has already gone this way. <laughs> yeah. He can never return this way. So when you say, I am committed... Hey! 
it means I have already gone this way. I cannot come back this way. Lift your right and say, I'm already committed. I cannot return now. Where am I going to? What am I going to do? I am a soldier in the army of the Lord. I am already committed. I cannot go back. I am not amongst those who turn back to perdition. In the name of Jesus, I am ready to suffer for what I believe. I am ready to risk my life for what I believe. I'm ready to be like Moses and be committed. Whether it works or it doesn't work, I'm committed. Hey. You know that God sent Moses to do something that didn't work. He told him, go and tell my people to go. It didn't work. He showed the sign. He did everything. It didn't work. The, the whole problem became worse. So sometimes God will send you to do something that will not work. Hmm? It's part of your journey. <laughs> That's why you need patience. Otherwise, you, you may never see certain things. Yeah. But God may send you say, go and do something that will not work. I'm sending you. And when Moses went, it didn't work. It's because you read the whole story. That's why you think it worked. But if you had been in Moses' life, when he returned that day and the whole thing had become worse, you would have asked yourself that, me at all. What is wrong with me? Why am I following something that has not worked and is not going to work? I am a pest. Yeah. So you see, some of you, we may send you on your mission. Your first mission may not work. Many of our missionaries out there, their missions did not work. Their first mission didn't work. Second mission didn't work. But third mission worked. Sometimes, some of them have not yet worked. Some of them have met certain raging waters and rivers that sweep away. Yesterday, Pastor Prince was in a, in a car. You see, David lifted up his hand and said, The Lord has saved me from the waters. He said he was in a car. There was a car in front of him. It went like this, not knowing that there was a big hole and the, the river was coming, when the flood was coming. He said the car went and disappeared before his very eyes into the water and the water took the car away. Yeah. And the people died. One of, some of the people who died. So when David said, the Lord has saved me from the waters, from being swept away, may Jehovah keep you from being swept away by every type of waters that are lifted up against your soul and your ministry. In the name of Jesus. There are waters. But through the angel of the Lord, which has been assigned to you since you were born, and other angels which are being recruited from outer space and other galaxies to come and stand by your side because you are among the chosen ones. Through that angel and through other angels, you shall survive the waters and every difficulty that will come against your life. In the name of Jesus. Hey. I see it happening. In the name of Jesus. God is with you. Lift your right and say, God is with me. I know that God is with me. Yeah. He's with you. He is with you. He is with me. He is with me. He is with me. John said, I have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. There is a power. I said there is a power. Do you understand what I'm saying? Greater than any other power that will make you overcome as you go along. Yeah. That is why Archbishop stretched out his hand that day to congratulate me. Because I would also do that now. When I see certain troubles come into your life, I will congratulate you if you are also able to overcome them. Because you must overcome them. Yeah. You must not be swept away. Yeah. And you must also take swimming lessons. So that in case you are swept away, 
you may be able to swim back. You know, when I look at some of your faces, I can just see the future. You know, and I can see something that is coming. What is coming to you is not special or different. It's what comes to everybody. It's both good and bad. Hmm? (laughs) Benedictus. It's both good and bad. What is coming to you? There will be some good days. And there will be some dark days. The Bible says if a man live for a hundred years. Let his soul rejoice in all of them. But let him also remember the days of darkness. For there shall be many days of darkness. That's why if, if you can rejoice, your soul can rejoice today. You can buy a stick of kebab and just bite it. Let your soul rejoice in, in it. Because there are days of darkness that you will have lost appetite for kebab. You will see and you ask yourself, what are, what are all these? Because of the waters of the rivers and the floods that have engulfed you. Trying to make you, blow you away from your original course. Those people were going home. They ended up in the mortuary. They were on their way home in their car. Maybe they stay at that Soma. Maybe they stay at uh, Sampa Valley. I don't know where they were going. No, they were also normal people. But waters came. Waters. And there are waters in this life. Fish. Waters, different types of waters. Trembling waters, raging water. Waters with force. Waters that are going to the left and to the right. But through the help of the angel of the Lord that has been sent to you, you will be able to survive. You will be able to make it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm here to talk about the ministry. So, if you are not into the ministry, I would advise that during the break, you take the opportunity to go home. Because this is about working in the ministry full time. That's the topic. Mm, I, I cannot pretend. I cannot pretend. I don't know what you studied in school. But I can assure you that I also studied a very good course. In my in school <laughs> for seven years, yeah, I've also been to school. If I had not been to school, I would be afraid of you. But I've been to school by the grace of God. Do you get it? Yeah, I had a good course and a good subject to do. So during the break, we are going to take a break before I give you the list of works. But this is not about writing notes. Forget about notes. It's about God is putting something in your spirit and sowing a seed in you. Yeah. So immediately after we close, architects back home, doctors home, IT consultants home, those of you into PhDs and whatever, to the house. Let there be left a remnant. Yeah, just a remnant. Yeah. Great, all great people. Ask your neighbor, are you a great, a great, um, important person? You need to leave during the break. Sit down.
Okay. When Grace finishes singing, we're going to take a break for five minutes. And then during that break, you will have a chance to leave quickly. Amen. Yeah, I don't joke. You. I've told you over and over and over again. Uh-huh. Yeah. Work on while you have the light. Night comes when no one can work. So come on, get your tools and work while you have the light. I said work on while you have the light. Oh, work on while you have the light. Night comes when no one can work. So come on, get your tools.